celebrating black history and this morning we have the grand finale of our special series highlighting women. We're celebrating a hidden figure. Time magazine calls her one of the women who changed the world. Dr. Patricia Bath is the inventor who revolutionized the way cataract surgery was performed. I will have the privilege of speaking with her in just a moment, but first, take a look at her story. The human eye is one of our most complex organs. 100 million cells working hard each day to give us the gift of sight. But as we get older, sometimes the eye's lens gets cloudy, creating what's known as a cataract, a medical condition that makes it hard to see. For years, ophthalmologists struggled with finding a better way to remove cataracts. Friends and colleagues, it's a pleasure to present this preliminary report on eczema laser cataract surgery. Dr. Patricia Bath is the pioneer who revolutionized the way cataract surgery was performed. I discovered a method to remove the cataract using a laser beam. She's the first person to use a laser to remove the entire cataract. She invented a transformative technique called laser FACO. I knew that that was a groundbreaking discovery. So I immediately did file a patent for this new technology in 1986. History in the making. Dr. Bath is the first African-American female doctor to receive a medical patent. Her curiosity began as a child, and by the time she reached high school, she was a National Science Foundation scholar, and her cancer research earned her a New York Times front page feature. I was in Harlem. It was the tip of the civil rights era. I think that was noteworthy, that a black child in Harlem could be doing scientific research alongside a white kid from the Hamptons. She went on to earn her medical degree from Howard University. As she rose in the ophthalmology community, she was often the only woman and the only person of color. I did not allow that to phase my vision. If anything, it challenged and inspired me not to be equal, but to be better and the best. She became the first woman ophthalmologist at UCLA's prestigious Jules Stein Eye Institute. In 2009, her advocacy work for the blind earned her the ultimate honor. President Barack Obama appointed her to his Commission for Digital Accessibility for the Blind. It was exciting to become an incidental role model simply by striving for excellence, working hard, and giving back to the community. So good morning, America. Dr. Patricia Bath. that you received and coming on out like that. <laughs> Please tell us, at a time, this revolutionary technique that you come up with, at a time when women and minorities in science were often overlooked and marginalized, I'm sure that you had some hurdles that you had to overcome. How'd you do that? Well, I had a few obstacles, but I had to shake it off, mm -hmm. just like Taylor Swift says. <laughs> <laughs> shake off the haters, shake off shake the haters. Shake off the haters. <laughs> You know, um, hateration, segregation, racism, that's the noise. And you have to ignore that. Keep your eyes focused on the prize. And the prize is just like Martin Luther King said. So that's what I did. I focused. You talk about um, Dr. King. And your career really parallels uh, the pivotal moments in the civil rights movement. How did that impact you? Well, you know, um, as, a, as a medical student, even as an undergraduate, I was involved in the civil rights movement. And so, you know, I saw the results of the suffering from racism with healthcare disparities, and I was determined to make a difference. I was determined to try and serve my community in Harlem. And because you had offers to go all around the world, and you chose to stay here in your community, even working out in California, you were still working with the Martin Luther King Hospital. You know, I had dream cr credentials from NYU and Columbia 
And when I was at UCLA, mm -hmm. I decided I'm going to serve the people in Compton and Watts in addition to my practice at UCLA. You know, I had to do that um, because of my formative years during the civil rights struggle. And you have, though, traveled around the world in helping people and preventing blindness with your organization. Tell us about that. Well, the American Institute for the Prevention of Blindness, we championed and presented a new concept called community ophthalmology. And this, and using this strategy, we wanted to prevent blindness throughout the world because we believe that eyesight is a basic human right. And Just we, like health care is a basic human right in America. <laughs> I said it. I know, you said it. I said it. You said it. You said it, my friend. And you know, we, we have a little something in common. My parents met and fell in love at Howard University. My niece is a graduate of the medical school at Howard, of which, you, of course, you are. Right. They're celebrating your 50 years from doing that uh, with, a, with something special for you at Howard. Exactly. I graduated in 1968. This is our 50th anniversary, and I'm being honored by a name scholarship. Oh, that's <laughs> wonderful. at NYU and we have some people from NYU, a, a young woman who wants to ask you a question. Hi, Dr. Beth. Hi. Thank you so much for being with us today. My name is Ijeoma Chinuba and my question for you is your career has been full of so many firsts from your time as a resident at NYU to your time on faculty at UCLA. How did you remain open to pursuing these roles, although um, there were no other women or African Americans who had done those things before? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I need to connect with what Robin said you know, coming from um, a family. My father immigrated from Trinidad, Trinidad in the West Indies. My mother came from the South. And they had high expectations, only 100%, only A's. You know, they wanted me to absolutely be the best. And so I had to use my life and, you know, reward them by hard work. And how did you become, but you're so optimistic, and I believe that optimism is a muscle that gets stronger from use, but when you see like these young residents and knowing what, what you went through, I mean, how, how did you bypass those, those hurdles? You know, I want to pass the torch to um, young girls and have them do STEM, and obviously the residents choose ophthalmology, and I want them to avoid some of the financial hardships I had by sponsoring uh, the Patricia Bath GoFundMe scholarship at Howard. I'll make sure that my niece, because she is a graduate, does that. And do you all have something that you would like to give, Dr. Bath? I have a gift for you. Oh. <laughs> GMA fans, Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.